Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life, and we've decided that we were going to be diversifying content uh, starting this month, and we're doing that. So this month, starting today and every Tuesday, we're going to be giving you guys tutorials from some of the best martial artists on the planet. This month is going to be represented by Muay Thai world champion Miriam Nakamoto. She'll be giving you tutorials every Tuesday of this month, giving you guys tips, tricks, goals, and things that you can work on to improve your stand-up. Uh, this particular video is going to be all about head movement and footwork. Uh, she's asked me to give you guys a little bit of a message. You can actually schedule private lessons with her. Uh, I added the link in the description below so you can click on that and get it scheduled and she'll work with you either in person if you're in the area or online to kind of help you with your uh, your footwork, your head movement, or anything that has to do with your stand-up. So feel free to check that out. Enjoy the video. Keep the martial arts legit. Nakamoto and I'm here to do a martial arts tutorial for McDojo Life. So a little bit about me. I'm a eight-time undefeated Muay Thai world champion um, and as of recently a WBC Muay Thai Hall of Famer. Whew, that's a mouthful. Okay so I'm gonna do a tutorial on head movement and before you say why the hell would I listen to a Muay Thai fighter about head movement, because we notoriously don't have any, I will explain to you the reason why you should is because I've invested the last three years into achieving passable head movement and footwork. I did well within my career without these things, but I knew, I think as most, most true champions know, that when you have a hole in your game, you're incomplete. And my major hole was head movement, um, footwork, angle work, uh, making a miss, making him pay, riding the razor's edge. I didn't have these things. I won my world titles purely, I'd say more on athleticism, uh, power, and just willing to beat myself on my opponent until one of us broke and it was usually them. Uh, I know, not the best tactic, but it was successful. So I went on a quest for the last three years, investing and in learning um, how to fill that hole. And so I went to a boxing gym and I go in there and the eight year olds were better than me. I'm an eight-time world champion coming into the gym and the eight-year-olds were better than me and unfortunately the boxing coach knew that I was an eight-time world champion so I was given even more shit about this. It was a big humble pie I had to swallow and I did and I put the time in, I put the work in um, and I also was fortunate enough to be blessed with a boxing coach that allowed me to have the dialogue with him and build my own drills so I could bridge the gap on the um, a different communication style of a boxing, boxing coach uh, compared to a Muay Thai coach. So anyways, here is your cheat sheet to the last three years of hell for me. So I hope you enjoy this. One of the things that is really important when you, when you do this is to let go of what you know. Don't come into the gym or come into this and think, oh, well, I know this and this is how I do it when I do this. Like, let that shit go. Um, that way you can 100% invest into what you're trying to uh, become. Like, fully take it in and take it on 100%. And then once you have a handle on it and you have a level of mastery, then you can go back, <clears throat> then you can take it back to what you're proficient in and modify it from there. Okay, so uh, I guess the long, long, uh, shorter way to say that would be let your ego go, put that shit aside, leave it at the door. Um, like me and you know going into the gym and the eight year olds were better than me as an eight time world champion. Um, so firstly, I'm gonna do this in a boxing stance more so. And again, that was just committing to what I'm trying to learn. So I'm here in a boxing stance and I understand that my feet would not be pointed this sideways for Muay Thai. Again, I'm just 100% trying it on. And so then um, I learned this at Third Street Gym uh, in San Francisco under uh, Rob. He's, uh, pro his program is 415 Boxing. And so the first thing he taught me with a slip is it's here and then it's there. And it's here and it's there. 
So let me point out a couple key things with this. If I take away the hands, because I think oftentimes people get a little distracted by what's going on in the upper body, and they don't pay attention, enough attention with what's happening in the lower body. And like, listen, if you're trying to learn how to walk or run or whatever, and you only pay attention to the arms and not to the feet, where the fuck are you gonna go exactly? So taking the arms away, I'm just gonna have you guys look at the feet. So here's my head orientating right towards my opponent, opponent in the center line. Now look, as I turn my front foot, that takes my head off the center. Now I'm gonna turn my back foot and shift my weight onto the left, onto the front foot. You see how that took my head off line? So boom, boom. What's beautiful about this is it loads your punches as well. So simple, and now I'll do it with the hands. There's my shield, right? Because I'm slipping the cross. There's my other shield because I'm slipping the jab. Does this make sense? Okay, so then also little variations on that, what I noticed. Because um, oftentimes when I touched upon head movement before, they would show me a lot of this stuff and I found I was slow as fuck at it. I mean, 20, 17 years spent with my torso upright, fighting like this, and definitely not ever sitting down for punches because then you'd get kneed in the face, right? I mean, I'm doing Muay Thai over here. So I'm here, I'm here, I'm not shifting off to the side. I'm just throwing from here, maybe a teep, and then step, step. So that was the, the way I would move and the way I would shift my weight, which really wasn't at all. And so now I'm taking it into shift, 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 one, two, shift, right? So it's completely different. So it was kind of a relief for me because I had much fatter, faster, fatter, faster feet than I did upper body movement. So by making it more about the feet rather than my torso, I could do it with a proficiency quicker. <laughs> now a couple tricks I learned was that, uh, and nobody told me this, it's just something I kind of happened and figured out. So I'm shifting here and I'm shifting here, but I found that I could achieve the same result for shipping the cross if I just stepped back with my right foot. So watch this right here. Boom, look, my head's offline. I'm still looking right at the target and I'm ready to go. Do you see that? And it's fucking beautiful. And especially too, and like I'm about almost 5'9", and I have a long torso and long legs, and generally people within my weight class are shorter than me, so it's pretty easy for them to get up under me. But if I, so when I crouch down and I'm trying to do inside fighting with them, they're still under the meat, so I have the disadvantage. But if I just drop my foot to the side, instead of back, see, that's back, here's to the side, look, I'm loaded for body shots, and it just, it lowered my level, and now I'm loaded for body shots, and I now I can compete with them uh, in this area of the fight, okay? Now we're moving on to footwork. So you got the head movement part, portion. Not, not much of a drill, but a little bit. You get the concept. Um, uh, I'll do a later tutorial where I feature noodles, and that'll help you with the head movement portion of the drill. <sighs> head movement, uh, drilling for head movement. Anyways, so now we're gonna do the footwork, okay? So now we're gonna do the footwork, for uh, more boxing and uh, the angles. And so I'm here, right? And then, so you've watched boxers, and they're friggin' amazing. And they're like, come in here, punch, 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 here, punch, punch, slip, punch here, boom, 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 here, go under, boom, 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 whatever. It looks awesome. So how do you get to that point? I had so many friggin' struggles, but I had some epiphanies and uh, I'll share them with you. So Muay Thai fighting, we tend to be very straight fo straightforward. We don't we don't really uh, turn the angle on the shoulders, so we don't have as many as much loaded punches because punches are kind of an accessory, and then punches also help feed kicks. Whereas in boxing, punching is the meat and potatoes of the sport. So, but actually underneath all that is uh, footwork and effective ring generalship and all this other stuff. But uh, anyways, so one of the things that helped me even uh, even um, move around the bag or whatever object I was working around and just kind of understand proper positioning for uh, boxing and for for um, 
punches was I would take this because how many times have you moved around the bag and you end up here? You get this great angle and you did a good job, but you're square and you're not in proper position for punching. I would do this all the time and also I would see it all the time. So one of the things that helped me is I would hold an object. It could be a pool noodle. It could be a broomstick. It's kind of long though. Anything or a bat or a stick. You could go make a stick, but I would hold it. So it was like, it was like a gun and I would aim it at the opponent. So everywhere I moved, it had to face the opponent. So if I just did this walking, this would turn my shoulder at all times. You can see, see how I'm keeping this angle no matter where I move, okay? So now doing it, this in a fighting stance, it's gonna look more like this. See that? Boom. And so what's nice is, as I move to the left, I didn't do this and then that. Did you notice that? So instead, I kept it at the target. So I led with my hip. Does that make sense? See that? So I'm gonna lead with my hip. So that's such a super little, a simple cheat, right? Boom, pushing off, pushing off, right? Now if you wanna add a slip, boom. See, I'm still pointing at the target. Bam, punch, punch, boom, slip. Does that make sense, guys? So just by using this tool right here, it's so freaking simple. But with a little bit of personal accountability, and this is really, truly helps to be a marker, then you can see, see where you're ending up. If you're here, not at the target, right? You could just use a beam right here to point at, and then draw a head on a piece of paper, I don't know. Tape it to the beam. There we go. Bam. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, footwork. And so this was another fucked up thing for me because with Muay Thai, you don't really take these angles. Like I would say that the most that I would do, like you do a slap shot and then you kick and then you kind of skip to the side as you do it. Or, you know, um, they're coming forward and you, you post on them and then you just like kind of take a piece of pivot and then you kick and then you're kind of right there. Um, and then usually they land heavy on their back leg, they're flat on their back foot, and then they have this lead, uh, lead foot up and the, the lead knee cock, which is a really fucking tar retarded position if you're trying to punch. That doesn't even make any goddamn sense. So the hardest part for me was uh, learning to move laterally and also learning to move off of a weight shift. So what I mean is pushing from here, right? And then um, coming from here, coming from here, coming from there, coming here, 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 here. So that was so fucking difficult for me. And um, common mistakes that I would make was, and I see this a lot too. So people want to step, you step, and you're slipping the cross, right? You step, or even you just slip the cross, right? I'm gonna go to the left. So what people generally do is they take their chest out to the left, and they step and then they go like that. And what my boxing coach told, told me was you wanna go um, from your hip rather than your chest. So that looks more like that. If you see, see right there, I led with my hip. I didn't lead with my chest. So you slip, step. Does that make sense? Or if you wanna slip and go at the same time, I'm still not opening up my chest to do this and exposing my face. And then moving the other way, so the jab comes, you slip, and you're gonna push off the lead foot, your left foot, shift your weight, and then land. Uh, it's gonna be right foot, left foot, okay? Again, so slip, push off the left, land with the right, land with the left. And I got that nice angle in on their ear. And if you look at any of my footage on YouTube, you see I did not move like this ever so and especially moving this way god damn what a motherfucker so now i'm going to show you a drill that helped me um make movement like this much much easier so uh i was really lacking in the lateral movement department and so this by jumping so as i get better and get more balance I'm gonna drive, swing.
And so it's in a diagonal because I'm gonna force my body to balance, to drive and explode and also balance on the ending. Oh shit, see? That's my three knee surgery leg side. And so do you see that I'm pushing off this leg and having to catch here, so it's the same thing. I'm gonna push off this leg, so I'm gonna slip, right? And I'm gonna push off this leg and spin it. And then going the other way, right? I'm here in my stance, right? So I just slip the jab, I'm gonna push off that leg and then catch myself right there. So boom, boom, right? Boom, wait, so slip, right? Catch, slip, push, right? So just such a simple drill, by doing this, this activates all the proper muscles that you're using. Because as I'm here and I move, I'm slipping their jab or I just catch their jab and then I'm moving off to their left. I have to put my weight on this left foot and as I push off of it going to my right, I'm rotating and pushing off the uh, ball of this foot, the big toe of this foot, the calf, the quad, the glute, stepping and catching, and making sure I land angled with my shoulders. But honestly, I wouldn't focus on the landing with your shoulders as much right now if you're doing this, because to me, some people will say, no, you have to do it all at once. But to me, that's too overwhelming. So there's so many moving parts. Why not work from the ground up and get your foundation set and then build on top of it? I mean, that's the way they build buildings. That's the way they build houses. Why would you do it the other way? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, so really simple and easy. And then you bring your object back into play. And then you can do your movement. Punch, punch, boom. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. See, so much easier. You want to slip, slip. Boom, 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 boom. And after three years, here's where I ended up. This is a light sparring session happening at Fight and Fitness in San Francisco. Now in slow motion, I'm going to talk about what just happened. So I'm already here weight shifting. And because of this, it's harder to read what uh, punch I'm going to throw. And uh, as he tries to answer back because of the weight shift, I uh, move my head out of the way. And now I'm setting him up for to land the right cross right there. Yep. Boom. And usually when you land the cross, people need to get that back so they start coming forward. And I do a very, very subtle, beautiful thing here. If I do say so myself, I take one step back and then I take the angling step out to the left at the same time shifting my head offline. When my back foot lands, boom, there's a kick. And that only took three years. If you like the video, please give me a follow on Instagram at Miriam Nakamoto. This has been Miriam Nakamoto for McDojo Life, keeping the martial arts legit.